People are dying prematurely because of a poor diet. Globally, around 800,000 people are undernourished. But what we've seen happen is a, a huge shift. So over 2 billion are now overweight. And that means the pattern of diet-related disease is changing, with a huge rise in type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and some cancers. In rich countries, we eat too many calories, too much fat, sugar, salt, too much meat, too little vegetables, legumes, and nuts. And that's a foretaste of the global problem to come as other countries' economy develops and they transition, abandon traditional foods and move in to a more globalised diet. The rise in obesity which follows is not a change in our genes, it's not a collapse in willpower, it's about a change in the food system. Food becomes more abundant, convenient, and is heavily marketed. And if we overpurchase, we overconsume. And that's exacerbated by low activity levels. We've swapped those manual jobs for office jobs. And our lifestyles are dominated by cars and screens and labour-saving gadgets. Who actually needs an electric pepper grinder? We can't turn the clock back, so we've got to transform our food system so it's fit for the 21st century. So the agricultural revolution brought us more food more cheaply and to more people, which is great. But now the emphasis needs to be on a more sustainable food system. Good for health, good for the planet too. We are in an era of extraordinary innovation in the food system. But I think it's important to note that many of these are small startups. They're niche businesses serving a small markets. We need big business to step up to the challenge too if we're going to be able to deliver change on a global scale. So what are some of the things that I think we can do? I think we need better labeling. There's opportunities in product to renovate products. We do need to think hard about marketing and also about the price of food. We know that nutritional labelling, particularly of calories, means that many people are able to choose a healthier option. But it also changes what's on the menu too. So I think the question now is can we also use better labelling to encourage people and businesses to make more sustainable choices too? When it comes to product renovation, there are big opportunities to uh, make every product the healthiest and the most sustainable it can be of its type. So, for example, setting stretching targets to reduce the amount of sugar in foods, and this is an example from the UK. We also need to ensure that portion sizes are appropriate for energy needs. And then we come to marketing. It's not just children that need protecting from marketing. We're all susceptible to the lure of a glossy advert or a, a multi-buy bargain. We need to look again at how uh, we're promoting foods. And then price. We need a much more coherent policy discourse about the price of food, one which really considers the true costs of production and the real impacts of consumption. And that's going to mean we need to rethink the whole system of tariffs and subsidies which underpin global trade. How are we going to enable change to happen? Till now, it's largely been about incentivising businesses through voluntary mechanisms. But we're seeing more and more governments now look to use their legislative powers. So things like sugary drinks taxes or restrictions on marketing of foods. And I think research is really stepping up to this and putting much greater scrutiny on the public health credentials of companies. That means it's easier than ever for government and investors to judge the performance of companies in relation to health and sustainability. The good news is that consumers are beginning to vote with their wallets too, and they will reward companies that help them to meet their aspirations for a healthy and sustainable diet. We know that with the speed of modern communications, what starts as a small niche rapidly can become a global trend. But of course, it also means that the recalcitrant companies can be punished very quickly indeed. We've got governments um, and consumers are now looking to businesses to help create this new food system. It's a moment of tremendous opportunity. But what we need to recognise is this is no place for business as usual. We have got to transition to a situation of business unusual. Thank you. Thank you.